everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums and today I'm going to do a project share and a process video. I'm going to show you how I made this. It's somewhat of a tutorial. Um, I used the Simple Stories 12x12 collection, Mix and Mingle, and I also used the uh, Bits and Pieces. Let me show you everything I have left over. That's what's left of the sticker sheet. And that's the paper left over. So my goal in making this mini album is to use up all the paper. You know, I don't like putting anything back in my stash once I've opened it up. Um, you may know I live and travel in my RV, so my storage is limited. So once I open a collection, I want to use it all. Um, and before I get into it, I just want to thank everyone who is always so kind to hit that like button and to... Um, Tell me in the comments what they think about it. A lot of times I'll do a project and not worry about the tutorial. And then I'll get so many people saying, oh, do you have a tutorial? And knowing that um, the project I made was that important that you asked for a tutorial really warms my heart. And thank you to the people who consistently uh, put notes in the comments. I don't know if you know, but as YouTubers, um, adding something in the comments and hitting the like button is the best thing you can do to help our channels. So that being said, let me get into this. So this is an eight and a half by five and a half mini album. The spine is, let's see how big the spine is, uh, two and a quarter inches. Um, I used one sheet of eight and a half by 11 chipboard and then a piece of leftover chipboard from another project. So it it makes good use of your paper. And that was the other thing. I just, again, I was just trying not to have any leftovers and create anything to go into my stash. I chose this collection because I wanted to do something Christmassy, but I just wanted something bright and colorful. You know, I was doing Halloween, which is so much fun, but um, I just wanted something real bright and real colorful and a little less of the traditional colors. But still, you have to have Santa Claus and Christmas tree. So anyhow, let me take you inside and show you this book. Uh, I did use this uh, paper I had in my stash. To me, it looks like snowballs. So I thought that was appropriate. Um, I had chosen this candy cane paper for the cover. I put that aside. And then there was this scalloped sticker in the sticker collection so I put that down and then I put down the snowflake um I don't know what you call it just textured paper it goes around to the back and then just to add a little bit of interest I used some white and red baker's twine and I had put it underneath this snowball paper and then used a, a bunch of score tape and some glue just to make sure that would adhere. This was one of the cut parts. I honestly spent a good hour and a half with a whole nother design. Didn't like it, ripped it up, put this down. You know, it just, it just was, I wanted to do layers. And then in the end, I just decided simpler is better. That's just my style. So inside, every time I open it, I look and think, oh my goodness, I put that Christmas tree sideways. But no, he's sitting on top of a little bug. Um, and you'll notice that I do have a lot of the stickers um, here. You'll also notice that there's different pieces of paper below the photo mats. That's how I used all the paper. And I show you that in the process video, my process of uh, putting that paper down. I have some stickers here. There's a photo mat. And now this page is held down with a magnet. And that'll open up and that'll give you that little spread. I, again, I love these non-traditional colors. I was going to put some white cardstock or even uh, computer paper on top that says place photo here, but I just decided to leave it simpler. I feel like it could use another mat just so it looks a little more finished, but you know, this has a magnet. I didn't want it to get too bulky in the magnet not work, so I just left it that way. So there is a nice spread for your photos right there as we open it up. I didn't put pockets in the front because you'll see in a second, I have enough pockets. And then here are the pockets. They're on the backs of the base pages. And that gives me ample room to put 
uh, these tags. So you'll see these tags in all of the album and I tie them in the same way with some ribbon and some baker's twine. And you know, the Simple Stories collection comes with a whole page of tags. Is it going to show? Well, no, it doesn't doesn't show you the tag, but it's a whole page of tag front and back. And those are great to, to journal on or to put a small snapshot on. Photo, whatever you want to call it. So I did take some of the scrap papers and put them on some cardstock, left the blanks plain. So again, gives you room to add some photos or to journal or just to add some extra color into there. Where I could, I cut out the remaining photo mats and put them inside. I did supplement the paper collection with some colored cardstock that was in my collection. I did not pick up the matching cardstock, but next time I will. So here is this page. This is just glued down on the side. This is just a, um, a piece of journaling card I had cut into it. So it's a little smaller than normal, but it just sits right there. Stickers. Um, that was from a journaling card or from one of the tags. Stickers, stickers. So that says Mary there. You open it up and it says Christmas. Love these. These were fun. So we just added that. And again, scrap paper. It helps break up the background, adds a bit of whimsy to it, and gives you a good spot uh, with the photo mat to add the picture. So even if you're not used to uh, mini albums, if this is new, you're giving it to someone, they can figure out where to put the pictures. I tried to do a grouping. I don't know that it was that successful. Um, a couple of these pieces are from the, I guess they're all from the odds and ends. Um, sort of the theme of this page was decorating. Here's a, a photo mat. I stuck some extra photo mats inside the pages. Um, journaling card and some of the tags. So again, the theme of this page is decorating. Uh, the odds and ends have all these pieces of furniture decorated. So I put deck the halls there so you can show your decoration. Now this doesn't have to stay here. If you put a photo here, you're going to move that somewhere else and then that'll open up and again furniture with decorations on here so that would be a great spot to put your christmas tree maybe your front of your house i don't know what but um yeah fun love the colors like this deep teal color i mean isn't it fabulous for christmas it makes sense right and then we open that, turn that, and then we have the pocket in the back. This was a cut apart that's shaped like a tag. That was from the odds and ends. Um, yeah, just some leftover paper, journaling cards, tags. It just all goes. Um, this I layer, there's four stickers right there. Um, just this yellow, this yellow was from my stash, which works. You know, it's just a little different color than you would normally see for Christmas. So then we open this up and uh, gives you room to put whatever you want. If you want to do more Christmas decorations, uh, family gatherings, whatever. So there is that page. And this, these are open. Anything where you see a sticker going over the paper or a tag or whatever, it's open so you still can add your photos. And then this is one signature. So this is the page. I put a um, pocket in the back and then added a side flap with a magnet. And that just gives you some big room to put your photos. And people will say, okay, that's great for your portrait photos. What do you do with landscape photos in a book that is portrait? Well, that's what you use the pockets for in journaling cards. So you can take it. See, this is actually uh, landscape orientated as opposed to portrait and you could put a landscape photo in there and put that in the pockets that works perfectly or another thing you could do is if you had a photo you could cut it in half or in two-thirds and one-third and then go over these um whatever the mats are that's okay i mean i could see a five by seven photo uh, a little bit here and then most of it on that page even if you cover up some of the elements that are on there, that's not a big deal. But of course you can remove them. Okay, so now we're here to a Christmas party. So we have cheer, a couple of bottles of 
looks like champagne to me. A little tag that says Christmas Sing Along, this old record player. That's just a photo mat. And that says Mix and Mingle. You could put a photo on the back of there. I didn't double mat this because I liked that pattern. And again, I thought you could use it to put a photo on. So that goes there. There's another tag. It's a Christmas party. So room to put your photo there. Joy is open at the bottom and this mixer is open. And then again, party theme. So either party or baking or drinking, uh, if that's your thing. So again, this is open so you could put your photo and put it in there. Uh, again, scraps of paper just to break up the uh, pattern paper that is below and to use up the paper. And now this will open this way. Lots of things in this pocket, a couple of tags, cookie exchange, there's our VW with the tree on top. There's Santa. I mean, he's a cute Santa, isn't he? It says Christmas, it says 25. Um, just a compilation of different elements. This can come out, so you can stick that in the pocket once you put your photo there. But I put that there. I love how the teals and the greens all go together. Um, and then finally, here's the back. I guess I could put something here, but I didn't. And there we go. There is that. So that is the walkthrough. If that's all you want to see, thank you so much for, for coming along. Don't forget to hit that like button. But if you want to stay and watch the process video, it's coming up right now. Here I show you that I take an eight and a half by 11 piece of chipboard and just cut it in half. So it's going to be five and a half by eight and a half. And then I do grab out of my stash another piece of chipboard that is eight and a half. And I think it was about two, two and a quarter. I just used it as is. I took some white eight and a half by 11 cardstock and I knew I wanted to join them to make the cover. So I add some double-sided adhesive to the side of my paper. And then I peel off the backing and start putting it together and then realize, oh, this is not going to work. Duh. I, the paper or the chipboard is eight and a half. I need it the other way. So we make mistakes and we move on. So I just go ahead and keep that uh, adhesive on the side and add another one to the long side of it. So I'm joining the 8.5 by 11 uh, cardstock together on the 11 inch side, not the 8.5 inch side. People who have watched my channel realize that I do cover my mini albums in a couple of different ways. Um, in this case, I knew I wanted to wrap the spine of the book with this, that snow, snowball paper, I call it, that uh, textured paper. So I really didn't care how the edges of the cover and the spine looked. Um, and actually it makes it a little easier. All right, I have this six inch roll of double-sided adhesive. It's expensive, but it lasts for quite a while. And these uh, chipboard, of course, are five and a half, so I'm going to have half an inch left over. I put them side by side on my roll. I unroll it and then just take my spine and put it right there on the edge so I don't waste any paper. I'll cut that and I'll cut right there to get it off of the roll. Whoops. And then I will take the uh, spine piece and I'll attach it right onto there so there's no no waste no waste I also have a two inch piece I, I don't know if I use it in this one of score tape I really need to get it's not score tape it's just a double-sided clear permanent adhesive on a roll I need to get one inch because I seem to always need to fill in the gaps with one inch here I'm just trimming around the corners of any of the adhesive that'll show it's not a big deal if it does because when you wrap the book it's just going to all attach. I'm peeling off the edge. See I have just about one inch that I need to cover. But since I don't have one inch I take 
quarter inch because that's what I have and just cover it a couple of times just so it adheres real well. So sometimes I do use liquid adhesive to cover my books, but in this case, my white paper that I'm using, it says it's 65 pound weight, but I find that it shows the glue lines. And so I like to use this, uh, this adhesive, the double-sided adhesive. It, it keeps everything flat when you make a cover. There's no bubbling. Yeah, you may have seen my, my arm there. I'm still in my pajamas, but it's probably 5.30 in the morning. Um, I tend to get a real early start. All right, I'm just placing it there just to see where everything's going to fit, make sure there's room, because I don't trust myself after the fiasco with putting the tape on the bottom. And now's the fun part, is peeling this off. I'm going to go in a little faster motion. Hang on. Okay, I'm just in double speed because I like watching paint dry, watching me peel the backing off of adhesive. It's got to be twice as boring. Um, I don't have the measurements written down. You'll have to uh, just accept that sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but at least I'm showing you the process. And, and I'm telling you the measurements as I go, so if you grab a pen and paper, I'd watch this video through one time, write everything down, and then um, do it again when you want to make it. Craft along with me. So I put quarter inch double-sided adhesive on both sides of that chipboard piece. I realize my backing isn't burnished, so I burnish it a little more. And then I put this right on that quarter inch tape. I sort of overlap the tape just a little bit because I don't need a whole quarter inch. Um, so it's, it's not exactly a quarter inch gusset. It's a little bit smaller. And by overlapping those two areas that have the double-sided adhesive, it really sticks. It's not going anywhere. All right, and just so I can see where my edges are, I take my bone folder and go along the edges of the chipboard. That bone folder is a non-stick Dress My Craft bone folder, and it is wonderful. Uh, I'm not being really fussy about this. I'm just grabbing my scissors coming about an eighth of an inch close to that corner of the chipboard. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, uh, but it works. And I use the table surface to um, help fold everything, so it just gives it a good crease to start. All right, will the glue come out? Yes, it does. So my theory is if you put this liquid adhesive down on the corners of, or the edges of the chipboard, and let it sit for a minute, but not too long, you don't want it to dry, it helps uh, moisten up the fiber so then it will fold better. Now, I don't know if that's actually a scientific truth, but in my mind, that's how it works. So I go with that. All right, pushing, burnishing, making sure everything's down. Some glue might seep out onto the corners and then I push in that corner just so it's a little flat. I have to work fairly quick because I put all that glue down on the edge of the chipboard and I don't want it to dry. That's Worse than not having the fibers of the paper moisten, if that is a thing. So again, just use whatever means you have to burnish everything down. And just use the edge of the bone folder to fold everything up. I use my fingers to hold it down and burnish. I think this side actually has that tape, or maybe it was the other side. Remember that mistake tape I put down? The double-sided adhesive. So it'll stick, it's not going anywhere. And I don't feel like I need to use score tape on the edge, or double-sided adhesive, on the edge of the cardstock, because you're gonna put paper on top of this, and that's gonna make sure it seals. I use my bone folder with the blunt tip. Oh, here I'm just pushing down just to make sure it goes in the crevice. So we've got that double-sided adhesive, and, and what's happening now is the double-sided adhesive is meeting each other in that chipboard. All right, so here's the thing. I haven't used Tyvek in maybe two, three years. And I was grabbing an envelope out of a box in my stash and I have this white Tyvek. And I was thinking, you know, this white cardstock is so flimsy. Why don't I use Tyvek to help keep it together? 
In, in this process, I remember why I don't use Tyvek anymore. It, it doesn't glue. When you use liquid adhesive, that Tyvek, to me, it's like polyester. Nothing wants to stick to it. Um, it's, so I have to use the double-sided adhesive, uh, which is okay. But um, now I remember why I don't use Tyvek anymore. So I put double-sided adhesive on it. It's probably about eight inches by five. You do not have to do this. You could just use a piece of cardstock and that will shore up the inside of the cover. But here, but I'm using it, so I'll work with it. So I push it down. Good thing about Tyvek is it really smooths out even if there was wrinkles in it. So I'm just burnishing it and making sure it folds it fits into the fold nicely. And yeah, see, it does work. I mean, it really does make the book stronger. It's just, I don't like trying to adhere something to it. Okay, before I go on, let me give you the measurements for the hinge system. The paper is 11 inches by eight and a quarter. My pages are gonna be eight and a quarter. I usually allow more room, but I didn't have, I, I just wanted to use all the available space in this book. So you start scoring at two, then two and a half, three, three and three eighths, three and seven eighths, four and three eighths, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and one eighth, six and five eighths, seven and one eighth, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half. All right, and here's my method of making the spine. I just take my scored paper, and in between each of those half inch scores, there's two of them, so in the center, I'm gonna fold the paper over, making sure the sides of the paper are lined up and burnish. So there's five sets of half inch pieces, fold and burnish. All right, now I lay it down on my surface and I pinch that, I pinch the two half inch pieces together. There's no glue at this point. I just pinch those two pieces together. If you have a long fingernail, it, it be careful you don't have nail polish on it. It'll mar the paper. And then pull them all together and burnish. And then pull them all together and face them in the opposite direction and burnish. And so now we've trained our hinges to go where we want. So now I just take a little bit of glue and go into each of those sections, the two half inch pieces, sort of make sure you go towards the very top of that. I use this extra mat just because it'll get all over my surface. And just pinch them together real well. Grab your bone folder. Some might come out on the edge. Make sure you clean it up. And then just make sure that that uh, hinge is done. Then I'll go ahead and add glue. I might add glue to all of these at once. If this is a new technique to you, just do one at a time because the glue might dry. But I, I've sort of figured out what I'm doing here. So I can add the glue, pinch them all together, and I know that I'll be in good shape because I can work fairly quickly. But again, do one at a time until this becomes second nature to you. Then fold them all one way. Let's see, there were some coming out and burnish, and fold them all another way, and burnish. And there is our hinge system. I usually will let this dry before I do anything else, um, but our next step is to add that to the book. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the back. So now, normally I would glue this onto my uh, spine, but because I've got that Tyvek, I've got to use a, a double-sided adhesive. So again, it's not what I normally do. Um, this is actually score tape and I'll use a couple of pieces. I don't go all the way up to the edge because I will use glue, hoping that that'll stick to the Tyvek. But I do put it in the center. To me, the most important part of a book is the hinge system and how it attaches to the spine and the cover of the book. So I'm using some 
double-sided adhesive just to make sure it's going to stick because it sticks real well to that Tyvek. And we are going to have other um, pieces of paper attached to pieces of paper. When you have paper on paper, you can use glue, but this is paper on that polyester kind of Tyvek. So good points and bad points using Tyvek. I know some people use it in their books exclusively, um, but I'm sure they don't use a liquid adhesive with that, do they? If you do, put it in the comments and let me know how it works for you. All right, peeling off the backing of the double-sided adhesive. I am adding some glue to that area where I didn't put the double-sided adhesive in really any area that I can add glue that uh, may stick to the Tyvek. I don't know. I figure it's insurance if nothing else. So I'll put this down. I'm not being as generous as I normally would because I really don't feel like it's going to stick that well anyhow, but I want it, want it to stick. All right, and I'm just eyeballing this to see where it goes. I'm centering it top and bottom. There's only going to be an eighth of an inch top and bottom and just about a quarter of an inch side to side. So it's really important that you have it facing straight up and down. I'll use my fingers to burnish it. Um, I usually try to start in the center and work my way out and just make sure that the um, there's good adhesion. And then I'll grab my bone folder and push down. I'll go ahead and burnish with the bone folder. Make sure it goes into the channel. And just generally burnish it. I don't feel like I have enough glue in here, so I add a little bit more. And again, burnish. Just burnish. And then I'll start opening the cover of the book as I'm burnishing, uh, just to make sure that that paper is down into that channel. I'll straighten up my spine, move them all one way and burnish. Can you tell that I burnish a lot? Okay, I'm pretty happy with the cover. So we're good with that. We can move on to the base pages. So one of my secrets to making mini albums so quickly is I cut five pieces of paper at a time. So this is just a uh, cardstock and I cut it at five and a quarter by nine and a quarter. I cut five of them at one time and save those leftovers because we're going to use them for the pockets. So five and a quarter by nine and a quarter. Uh, this is an old Fiskars cutter that I've had forever. I don't think you can purchase them anymore. I'm worried what I'll do when I need to replace it. Now I take five more pieces that are eight and a quarter by 10 and a half. So I'm only cutting half of inch off of that um, eight and a half by 11. By the 11 inch side, just cut off half an inch. And just a quarter of an inch on that one side. Okay, so I have those 10 pieces. Now we're going to score the eight and a quarter by 10 and a quarter with the 10 inch side. We'll score at five and a quarter. So the uh, 10 and a quarter, I'm sorry, side up at the top, score at five and a quarter. All five of those pieces. I'm going to speed things up here just so we can get this done in one day instead of five. And then the other page will score at a half and eight and three quarters. So just score on both sides. Half an inch. All right, let's fold and burnish on those score lines. Oh, I wish this really was how fast I worked. But then again, you want to take time to enjoy the process. We'll score on these score lines. Make sure they're straight on the edge. That's why I stopped there for a second. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll put glue. I didn't even miter the corners. You notice that? Put glue on those tabs and 
we, this is how we make a the tube that will fit on the hinge. And by the way, that means that there is an extra hidden pocket where you could add yet another photo mat. I didn't, number one, I didn't have any paper left over. And number two, I just didn't want to. Um, but you can, if you wanted more storage space, and we were talking in the video of where you put your landscape photos, putting them in a hidden pocket is perfect for it. All right, now that I've gotten that done, I am just clipping on each of these hinges, just a little piece. I, I don't go all the way to the bottom, um, just a little triangle piece. Add glue to both sides of the hinge and add that tube into it. And then that last piece, I start at the back first, that last piece is ultra important that you get that straight because everything else to me is based off of that last piece. So just take your time and make sure it goes on. Another reason why liquid glue works better than um, double-sided adhesive here, because it gives you a little wiggle room. So again, I just add these little tubes onto the hinges, and that is how we attach everything. Once you've used this liquid adhesive and put it, you know, attach two pieces of paper together, again, in my mind, I don't know if this is true or not, but in my mind, the fibers of the papers will mingle and create a really good grasp. So it sort of locks it in. But burnishing is important, so I go back and burnish everything too. And there we go, there's our book. Okay, what am I saying here? This is the leftover from the base pages, cut down to six and a quarter, score a half inch on two short sides and one long side. So we're making the pockets. So I just made myself a note so I remembered what we're doing. All right, so I already cut it down, and now we're just going to burnish again on two short sides and one long side. Yeah, the sun is starting to come in. It must be eh, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. I, I have no idea. I have a gorgeous view of mountains in Colorado from where I am. It's supposed to snow today, so I'm excited. So anyhow, we're making the pocket. So each signature, each page grouping, will have the base page, which has the flap to the front, and on the back of the page, I'm going to put a pocket. There's so many uh, cute cut-aparts in this collection that I wanted to be able to have spaces to put them, and those tags, you know, this collection has one whole page of tags, so what is that, 16 tags, 20? I didn't count, but they're also adorable. Some I'll cut down, but there will be a lot to put in the pocket. All right, move the scoreboard over and well, let's go fast. Miter the corners and burnish fold all that. All right, so we'll get that all done and then we'll add these pockets to the bottoms of each of the backs of the pages. And also I made it this size or I knew it was gonna be this size so I could use the leftovers after I cut the paper down to put on the pages. Again, I'm starting from the back of the book. I don't know, just have it. I'm not sure why. Get all these pockets on. And we're good. All right. Oh, I am uh, cutting some red paper to put on the front cover inside and outside. I'll tell you the measurement in a second. The pages are 8 and 3 eighths by 5 and 3 eighths. I put them on the inside covers, front and back and outside covers front and back. I don't put anything on the spine because again I'm going to cover that with the snowball texture paper. Okay let's read what I said. Cut down five 12 by 12 pattern papers to eight and a quarter. Now cut down to four and seven eighths and another set of five by five and one sixteenths. So you will have five pieces five, eight and one sixteenth by four and three quarters and five pieces eight and one sixth by five and one sixteenth. Now with the remaining paper, cut it down to two and an eighth by five and one sixteenth. Cut down five more pattern papers to eight and one sixteenth by four and seven eighths. Add magnets if you so choose. I did choose to use magnets. So that's cutting down the pattern papers for the front and back and the inside of the pages. So basically I'm cutting down paper to add to the front and back 
inside cover, front and back, outside cut cover, and then all of the pages. So I'm just cutting all the pattern paper down. What I did is I took out the paper that had the um, cut aparts, and I had to use the paper with the cut aparts, but I looked and saw where the cut aparts were that I wanted to use and just cut accordingly. See, this paper, I would have liked to use that corner piece, that one. See, I was like, really, do I want to use it? And I was like, oh, well, I'll use it. I could have turned it over, though. So here's some of the cut aparts, but I have to use them because there are only, oh, how many pieces? 12 sheets of double-sided cardstock. I mean, it's good that there's only 12 sheets. 12 sheets is a lot of paper. Um, but there's not, that's one of the reasons why I didn't fill the pockets, because there was not extra paper left over. But I didn't have paper left over to put in my stash. So that's good and bad. So what I do, which I don't show here because the video is getting really long, is I put everything down and I use uh, some ATG and just tack it down at first. And then I flip it page by page and decide if that's how I want all of my papers. You know, some I change, some I decide, well, maybe that red isn't good with that flower pattern, or maybe the patterns, you know, I just throw it in and then I move things around accordingly. And sometimes that I'm making it, I'm like, oh, which side should I use? See, that one I was thinking, oh, should I use that side? And I did, because it matches with that doggy paper. All right, here's all of the cut apart. I'm gonna talk for a second, so I'm freezing it. So here's all the cut aparts I laid down and I just wanted to figure out what I'm gonna use for the cover, where I'm gonna put things. And then I cut down all of my tags and journaling cards and then I cut cardstock for the inside pockets. Sorry, I don't tell you the measurements, but I think it's gonna be the same as the measurement of the paper on the, the back of that one. So anyhow, I cut everything down and I figure out where I'm gonna start putting things. The cardstock from inside the pockets I took from my stash. Again, I should have purchased the pat the paper that goes with the collection, but uh, but I didn't. So I just found paper that matches. This um, yellow paper was sort of a stretch. I, that took me a while to decide what color to put there, but you'll see in a while while I put it there, if you didn't pick up on that from the walkthrough. So I put that all in, burnish it. It goes all the way to the bottom. Sometimes I don't put it all the way to the bottom, but I was able to. All right. So this to me is a fun part and you have to do it with sort of reckless abandon. I take all those scraps and I'm just adding them to the pages. They may or may not look like they match. Uh, see this one I cut down and added. Um, and I, see, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this one. So I play around with it. This one wasn't big enough. So I cut it, and you saw that hole in the middle, but I'll cover it up. So anyhow, just taking all of my scraps and cutting it down and putting it on the pages. I want there to be some cohesion to it, so I don't put, you know, seven different patterns on one page. I try to have patterns not match, but coordinate. That's the word, coordinate. And then I take my mats that I've cut down. Most I cut down six and a quarter by four and a quarter. The smaller ones are four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that's where you're supposed to put your photos on. And I try to make them so you can just have four by six photos. Some you'll have to cut down a little bit. Um, and this, see these I cut because they didn't have a piece big enough, but it fit. All right, what am I gonna do with this? I'm not sure I like all that yellow, so I cover it up. So again, I'm just taking my scraps. This one I put on some white paper. It wasn't big enough, so I had to change that. Um, just because it needed to distinguish it from the pattern paper below, so I put it on the white paper. So that's what I'm doing, using up the rest of my scraps, most of them. I still have some bigger scraps that I'll use for other things. This one also took me a while because I didn't want to put this paper portrait when it should have been landscape, but I just said, heck with it. Nobody will notice. 
it sort of affected my sense of proportion and uh, orientation. I guess that's the word. All right, so I've got all my scraps in the book. This one I really want to put on the front, but as you saw, uh, add photo mats, okay. As you saw, I ended up using that for the front cover. It wasn't my first choice. So, um, see this one I did put the white paper on. Uh, this is a bigger photo mat because it's on the inside cover. So the photo mat here is six and a half by four and a half and the white paper is six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So you can put your four by six photo, sort of a, uh, like an important photo to represent your whole Christmas season. And I use different colors, the same cardstock that I used in the book. So basically it's that mint green paper and red. I don't think I put any yellow, but we'll find out as we go. But see, you've got that scrap of that paper on the back and you add the cardstock and it really unifies everything. Now I'm looking at this, I'm wondering if that red piece in that middle page is, is straight. But once you start putting things on top, you won't notice. All right, I've sped it up again and I'm putting the photo mats down. Um, after I put the photo mats, then I start looking at all of the other elements I have, the odds and ends and the journaling cards and the tags, and try to write a story. So you'll notice one of those pages was uh, about holiday decorating. So I tried to find things that would match with that one page, those, those colors that bring to mind holiday decorating. And I just sort of lay them down on the page and then flip the pages as I go through uh, to create all of the other stories. And then once that's done, I start gluing things down. So I think I've got almost all of the mats made and put in. Do I want this one here? Yeah, I'll put it here. I think this page had me stumped for a while too. A larger page. I didn't want to cover the magnet on the side and I didn't want to cover that mat. So I guess I just left it plain, but added this one to there. Oh, I needed to get another paper cause I was out of that mint green. So this is a little darker shade, but again, once you add all of the other elements to it, you don't, you don't really notice it. I mean, it's the same tone basically. All right, what did it say? tags, ephemera, and whatever fits. So I just go through what I have left over and just figure out where I'm going to put things. I like that there because the, of the tone, but it sort of gets lost in it. I don't remember if it ends up staying. There's my cute little Santas. Do I want that there? So again, if I'm not sure what I want, I take some ATG and tack it down and then move on because I might find something better for it as I go through what I have. I wanted the 25 to be at the end because you know you might work up the holiday season to the 25th. So there are other places in the book it would go, but in my mind it had to be sort of chronological. That's just me. Oh, this tag was cute. Um, and I like the presents, the gift wrapping. And there are some stickers and some odds and ends that are gift wrapped. So this page is all about the gifts, which that isn't what Christmas is supposed to be about, but still it makes a pretty page, doesn't it? Especially people spend time and energy making their gift wrapping beautiful. We don't really give gifts anymore. We, we do donations. We might send fruit, but donations. Probably it'll be the Humane Society this year, at least for most of my peeps that I'm giving gifts to. Just because everybody seems to have pets and they would appreciate that. All right, so we're adding some stickers, tags, again, whatever. I'm going through all of the things left over. Oh, I realized I had forgotten all about the bits and pieces till right now. So oh, look at all this fun stuff. 
So I just sort of pull it out and piece it together. There's like nutcrackers. I put the nutcrackers together. There's um, the drink cart and the drinks. I put that all together. So I just look for everything I can use for a party motif and put that together. All right. Now, is this where we're doing the house decorating page? Yes. All right, deck the halls. Let's figure out where the wreath is going to go, where the cabinets are going to go. Yeah, you want the door, right? But I end up not using the door. So, yeah, it's just all about playing with it, trying to figure out what's going to fit and what's going to tell the story of the page. You don't have to match things to tell a story. You could match things for color. You could put things in chronological order, like if you... Uh, decorate and then buy gifts and then wrap gifts and then give a party and then Christmas Day and then Christmas dinner. You could do it that way. Um, or just look at what themes there are within the paper. I mean, usually the paper speaks to you and that's why you purchased it because the themes make sense. So you could do it. You could do it any way you want. It's your book. All right, just adding these. I'm gluing just the bottoms or the tops so you can add your photo in to the, um, I'm sorry that it's a little out, you can't see what it is, but the walkthrough will have shown you what it was. Um, yeah, make sure you can still stick your photos on those photo mats. I'm putting deck the holes on top. Again, you probably saw that in the walkthrough. There's this beautiful credenza, that, what would you call that piece of furniture? with all the cute little um, pieces on top. I stick a chair there just because I wanted three. So I like this that poinsettia, that teal poinsettia to go with the page. And I like that fall la because it matches with that yellow background. That way that yellow cardstock all makes sense. And again, just looking to see what I have. I'm layering up here at the top different different things because there was that sort of a pine garland but you'll see again at the walkthrough you saw it oh ornaments the ornaments are all that teal color I had a star and so that all seemed to match so just because I put it down doesn't mean it's going to stay forever it may and then once you put all these elements down and you're covering up all that scrap paper, it just all uh, goes together. It all ties it in. I try to put those elements um, not on one of the scrap papers or the other, but sort of overlapping a couple just so it, again, ties everything together. If I glue it, I'm just gluing it down at the bottom. All right, so that tag is there. You can stick something behind it. I do decide I'd like that fa -la, la ticket stub and the poinsettia. Christmas party or cheer? Cheer. But Christmas party, do I want to cut this down? Oh, Christmas party. We decorated a table with all the drinky poos or whatever's on that table. We have the record player. I don't know who has a record player. Does anyone have a record player anymore? I guess I know one person who has a record player. All right, joy. Joy and cheer. Oh, we're baking. We're putting all sorts of cooking stuff that I can find. Oh, there's a cute little gingerbread boy. That brings me joy. So I just glue it at the top and the little mixer and the little pie and the little gingerbread boy. Okay. More food and drinks. Oh, do I want that food? What else? Oh, there's more cake. What do I have here? A candy cane? I wanted something tall to fit in with there. No, nope, no, I don't. Do I want the nutcrackers? Do I want a pink tree? I want the tree because it's a different texture of everything else. So it is sort of a background. No, nope, it's the drinks cart goes with cheer and we're all festive okay there's a party happening all right now I glue down this 25 I had backed it on some red cardstock 
and sort of cut it down just because I want that red from the other page to, um, I just want the red to show. I know why I put Christmas. I had nothing else to put there. I wanted something large. I have these birds and that garland that really fits nicely at the top. All right, I think I've gotten it all. I'm going through the book one more time. I knew I had a couple of pages. I didn't have anything. I'm trying to use up all the odds and ends, which is dangerous at this point, because then you start putting stuff down that you really don't need to have down, but you want to use it all up. So I go through, and if it fits, it fits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, I wanted to use that sticker so bad. All right, anything else? Hmm. We're going to be holly jolly, and there's the Santa Claus, because Santa is holly jolly. And there's a cardinal to keep Santa company. All right, there was the rest of this decorating I just put down on the bottom. See, now I'm picking up teeny little pieces. Adding things to pockets, just whatever matches or coordinates or goes with the theme. This one I put there just because it's pink. It doesn't mean you can't move it if you were to make a book like this or purchase it or uh, have been given a book like this. You can move those around. Of course you can. All right. I am playing with the cover so long here. I decide I don't like Santa here. I want Santa on the cover. I want Christmas. In the end, this is what I choose for the cover. So we already went through that on the walkthrough. And really, that's about it. That is my process for putting together this book using the Simple Stories Mix and Mingle 12 by 12 paper collection and the bits and pieces. So I hope you got something out of that. I hope it wasn't too fast and sort of gave you a little peek into my process, scary enough as it may be. And I hope you like this book. Don't forget, hit that like bell, hit the subscribe button, and thank you again for all those who make comments in the comment section. I hope you have a fabulous day.